you want to get out? Is blood still on the hands of one particular West Country town? Oh, 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 oh John, John, John. Fielding, and this week I've brought Most Haunted to Somerset and the very haunted Taunton Castle. Taunton may rightly stand proud as Somerset's county town, but how many skeletons hide in the proverbial cupboard of its 800-year-old castle? The buildings here have certainly endured a varied past. A museum first opened in 1778, before the Victorians used this site to house both a private school and public baths. A stark contrast to the monastery that initially occupied this site seven centuries earlier. But behind the aesthetic pleasantries lies the bloody execution of over a hundred local men. Their crime was siding against King James II during the 17th century battles that raged in and around Taunton. Step forward the infamous hanging judge, George Jeffries, a cold and callous killer who may well haunt today's location. So with so much history and paranormal activity, who would be mad enough to spend last night here alone and in the dark? Well, that's exactly what Kieran and myself did. This is what happened. The thing I don't like about this particular area is all the display cases. Mm. Because you, you catch reflections and you catch shadows. Do you hear that then? Did you hear the banging? Yeah. The bang? Yeah. It did sound like it was coming from back in the hall. <gasps> it's weird. Shh. Did you hear that? What did you hear? I don't know. It's like a... I thought I heard shuffling. We've chosen this particular area because of its history. But... There are other parts of the castle. Oh. Which <laughs> was that from down there? Yeah, it was. Did you hear it? I didn't because I was Did talking. You shuffling again. It's like this one. Like this. Well, that's what I heard when we were in the other. You're shuffling on the carpet. Castle's museum had offered both Kieran and I a few audible outbursts, but who or what may be haunting this ancient fort? Over 400 years ago, the hanging judge George Jeffries conducted the bloody assizes here. His ghost is now seen walking along the empty corridors of the castle, along with the mysterious ghost of the Grey Lady. A fair-haired woman, dressed in what's described as 17th century clothing, has also been seen. And marching footsteps have also been heard in the empty rooms and along the corridors in the dead of night. Its main claim to fame has to be the Monmouth Revolution of 1685, when the illegitimate son of King Charles II raised an army of, of peasants in Somerset and Dorset. They were going to take the throne from the Catholic King James II, but unfortunately it ended in bloody defeat at the Battle of Sedgemoor. And about 500 peasant soldiers were brought here. The assize courts were held here in the castle and the assizes were presided over the Lord Chief Justice of England no less than George Jeffreys, the hanging judge. 500 people imprisoned in that building in there, 500 people tried and many of them sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered for high treason. They say that 
on the crossroads of Somerset, there was hardly a tree that wasn't drenched in blood, that didn't have hanging bodies or body parts hanging from it. This is the Somerset Room. Many of the museum workers refuse to come in here on their own, is that they feel they're being watched by a sinister force. There are dramatic temperature changes for no apparent reason, and a poltergeist likes to make itself known by moving objects around on a regular basis. One particular instance that I recall a few years ago is when I was actually doing some painting in the Somerset room on top of a pair of steps. And for some reason or other, the whole room went cold, extremely cold. And it, the hairs went up on the back of my neck. And I had to stop work, come down the stairs just to re regain my composure. Um, looked around, there was nothing obvious there. But clearly, there was something that sort of caused that room temperature to drop very suddenly. And I'm not a nervous person, in fact, I don't even believe in ghosts, but certainly there are times when I've felt rather, felt as though I haven't been on my own in the building. One of the custodians, actually cleaning the glass, one of the glass cases, um, thought someone had physically grabbed him by the neck but could see no reflection in the glass, turned round to see he was there, there was no one there. But on reflection, he actually thought that it felt more like a rope tightening around his neck. And of course, he was in the room where the bloody assizes were held. Castle House is said to be the most paranormally active place here. The ghost of a cavalier has been seen on the stairs, and the ghost of a young woman who was made to watch her brother's execution outside is said to roam throughout the building. Some of the staff refuse to come into the bedroom area as they claim it has an oppressive feeling and is always cold. Something else that's reported here is that objects disappear, only to reappear elsewhere. Taunton Castle is a place of siege, execution, death, pain, anguish and torment. If any place should be haunted, then this place behind me should. Taunton may have once taken centre stage in mapping out England's history, but will our investigation of this unusual looking castle prove just as interesting? And having been here with Kieran O'Keefe the night before, what does the parapsychologist expect our other crew members to experience? There's going to be an awful lot of emotional um, memories here. Um, a lot of people would have suffered. Do you think the mediums are going to pick up on that straight away? Definitely. The mediums may actually be just more empathic than you or I. You know throughout the, uh, the, the other episodes, that I am very skeptical about what mediums can do. But at the end of the day, there may be emotion in the fabric of the building, and they may just be picking up on that. The other problem is, because there's a lot of visual clues around the location, a lot of visual clues that do point to very negative emotion, we have to be aware that the mediums may consciously or subconsciously pick up on that. The great thing about working with David, though, is that he always preempts anything I'm going to say along those lines and always says, now I'm aware there are visual clues, but I'm going to try and block those out and go beyond that. It seems that the staff here are very aware and also quite frightened of some of the locations. And when I hear that, that makes me a little bit apprehensive. Yeah, and also it's that sort of story that will make other staff that come to work here, it'll make visitors, uh, it'll make various members of the team, like you say, suggestible. Um, it'll give them the same sort of experience because like you said already you are a little apprehensive but given that it's a professional team given that we've been in situations like this before I would hope that we don't let suggestion get the better of us 
So we must completely clear our minds of any hint of the worries that battle-weary castles can sometimes present. But history has proven this to be a town that played its part in both trial and retribution. But are those sinners still here? Or is one particular malevolent male entity responsible for the foul deeds that haunt Taunton Castle? It was almost like there was blood on his, literally blood on his hands. I was being shown by the two children writing on the wall. Well, the boy's dead. It was the writing and it was being scribbled out. It's the writing, it was being scribbled out. But something's happened here that has been um, covered up. He's one of the most aggressive personalities I've ever met, living or crossed. Somerset's county town is Taunton, and that town's castle is our base for the day. But this place also holds a bloody past. It was once a witness to one of England's most infamous deeds, the sentencing and slaughter of many mortals. But how many of these still haunt Taunton Castle to this very day? And to reflect the rich tapestry of a location that stretches back almost 900 years, a museum can be found here too. The perfect place then for medium David Wells and guest psychic Ian Shilito to unpeel the many layers of this historical and integral castle. It's really hard for me because my head is spinning. I feel really, the pit of my stomach, I feel really nauseous. And my ears are, my ears are ringing with it. It's kind of, um, I, I hate to use the word slaughter. I hate to use the word slaughter, but that's what it, it's, and the smells and the taste, it's kind of, it's like a butcher shop. In this you, you particular know. room? No, not in this room, not in this room. I, I want to go into the grounds and around the town. It's almost like the whole town is involved in it, you know? Um, the back of my neck is absolutely on fire. And there's something or someone I'm trying to ignore who won't be ignored. And, and I want to say, it's, there's like a platform here, and I, I, I'm having to look up at him. He's not on the staircase. It's like a, it's like a, a platform. I don't want to stand. I want, I want to actually do this. I want to stand here and look up at him like, and like that, like that. That's, so you're shackled? Yeah, I want to, and my feet are probably shackled as well, and I want to look up. I'm shackled, and there's a really horrible bastard, for want of another word, who is, is sitting in judgment. He's got, um, you know, the, the Prince Charles style wig on? Mm -hmm. You know, that kind, of, that kind of wig. And it's dark. It's not like a modern judge's wig. Um, there's almost like there is blood on his, literally blood on his hands. So they show me his hands and the, the blood is dripping Sorry. off his You're hands. Right. Yeah, I'm just getting very strange readings. What, from David? Well, it was when David knelt down. And, and what I'm getting is fluctuation from about 1.3 on the y-axis, but then it's going up to 6, 7, and then back down to 1.3, and then up again, down again. How unusual just... is that? that is quite it's quite unusual. unusual. Yeah. It's almost, as, it's almost as quick as the judgment is made by the simple look of the person, they're not given an opportunity to, to defend themselves at all. So, all right, for this is the first time you've brought it out, the judgment, you know, so we're talking about this man up here yeah. with the long wig is obviously a judge. He's a judge, yeah, absolutely. And these people are being brought to him yeah. and he's got blood on his hands, so yeah. therefore he's the one that's making the decision. Yeah, and there's, there's like columns of soldiers. It's, it's, it looks kind of Civil War time to me. Is there a name with this, this, this one man? And is, it, yeah, is he here all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of sense that he's around the town rather than always here. He might even reside here as a stomper. You know, he's one of these that he stomps around. He's one of the most aggressive personalities I've ever met, living or crossed. Any name with him? Um, Jeffries. Mm -hmm. Judge Jeffries. And how did he die? Can you pick up how he died or when he died? Do you know, it's, it's such a cliche, but you have to go with it. I feel like he died in the Tower of London, um, but not by being beheaded. Um, and I would think it would be the late 16, very late 1600s, almost a bit like 1690, that sort of era, maybe into 
the very early 1700s. Okay. The hanging Judge George Jeffreys did indeed use Taunton's castle as the 17th century courtroom in which he passed sentence during the infamous Bloody Assizes, and more sensory perceptions waited upstairs. Is there anything else that you can describe, you can give me any, any, anything particular about his dress? Well, you want to say, like, the old black hat thing, but, you know, it's, you know, because he's, he's, he's sentencing some people yeah, to death. Yeah, even more specific, can you describe it? The, the, what my guide is saying is it was permanently on. He what said does it, it look like? like? When it's kind of like a, it's, I don't know if it's like a mortarboard, it's kind of like a... It's not a hanky. You know how you see them and they put a black hanky? It's, not, it. it's a hat. Thank you. That's yeah, amazing. It's a hat. Yeah, okay. Thank you are for you that. Gonna, are you going to enlighten yeah, me? Yeah, I am. Yeah. After that basically, struggle. Basically, most people, two things, when they, when they imagine if they're faking anything or anything like that, they see a judge, he has, he has a white wig, and David said he didn't, he had a dark wig, mm -hmm. which he did. These came in years later, but the big one is that everyone expects that when they put the black cap on their head, it is only a piece of cloth in the shape of a... A, black a square, diamond, yeah. Black diamond, which you put on. But originally, in these times, they actually placed their tricorn hat That's on their head yeah, to pass the sentence of death. Right. Thanks. Why don't you like it, Neil? No, I don't like it. I feel really headachy in here. I need to sit down, actually. Can I just perch on this? I've got um, one woman. <clears throat> and I've got one young man. But they're modern-ish. They're much more up-to-date than what we've come across so far. It's, almost, it's, it's, it's abuse of some sort. Um, now, I don't know whether it's because he's not quite right himself which is, is no excuse for it, and then that's not what I'm suggesting. Or whether he was extraordinarily rebellious, or whether, he's, whether his parents were... Just a little bit odd. But, um... I'm, how long are you talking about? I'm talking last century. So what happened in this room then? Why why is this room so specific to what what you know, you've picked up on? Well, the boy's dead. Mm -hmm. The young boy is dead. How old? Young. Late teens, early twenties. Mm -hmm. um, Name with him. I think it's Lionel, okay. which is a bit. Okay. What's the father? Unusual. Is there, you, unusual. Sorry, you mentioned a mother and a father, and that sort of mm -hmm. what's father. Father seems to have his nose in books. And they're kind of, um, you know those wonderful old books with um, Egyptian, you know how they have those sketches of excavations? Mm -hmm. that, that, you know what I'm saying? Um, books like that, so I think he was involved, you know, I guess. Can you hear this knocking? I'm hearing them all the time, why are they talking? I keep hearing uh, yeah. that, but there seems to be two, two, diff two distinct tones. There seems yeah. to be a, a, a distinct sort of thud which seems distant. And there's something that's more of a bang that seems to be closer. We can hear you. Whoever you are, we can hear you. But it does seem that there was, there's a mystery surrounding exactly how he did die. Are you able to tune in in any way to establish his mental state? I know he's going to be really yeah. traumatised, but I mean, trying to tap into... That, I mean, that's exactly what I am trying to do, and what I can't get to is just, you know... I'm finding right. it really difficult to breathe in here. It's almost like... Do you know what? And I've had a taste in, the, in my mouth as well, but it's almost like I I'm finding it quite difficult to breathe. I'm not just saying that for a fact. I'm not. I, honestly, yeah. I'm not. I'm just... Because just as you're saying that, I was just about to say, I feel like suffocation. With David picking up on two tragic losses of life that spanned several centuries, we decide the time was right for guest medium Ian Shilato to also unearth a few facets of this property's past, starting with another visit to the museum that has long stood here. Well, I think, first of all, we just remove everything from here, because mm -hmm. obviously this is very, very recent. Filtering through all that, two energies stick out down yeah. here so far. One of them is a soldier. Uh -huh. 
uh, you can ask me what year it is, I'm not sure. Um, but he's got a very long sword, very long stick, like a sword uh -huh. type of thing. He's got, um, I mean, we must be going back 300 years or something, but there's almost like a tunic style. It's either blue and yellow or blue and red. There's, there's a specific royalist colour yeah. associated with it. Um, he has been seen around lots of places here. I certainly saw him earlier on today. He's also around, he's checking us out. Um, I'll get back to him a bit later on, hopefully. The other one that's in this building is a lot later, a lot later in time. So I'm, again, saying probably round about um, pre-Victorian, um, a man, older man, very grumpy, cantankerous mm -hmm. old mm -hmm. man, grey beard, quite square, a bit like um, Captain Nemo or whatever his name was. Oh, Do you know right. who I mean? Yeah, yeah, Captain... Yeah. Jules Verne character. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, but not happy. I mean, he came up to me, he just went straight into your face oh, like right. that. Yeah, so yeah. I think he's going to be trouble later on. Oh, right. I don't think he likes what's been done to this particular area. Okay. Um, I saw him with plans on a table mm -hmm. and saying, it's not like this, it's not been done like this. I want it done like this. So is there any initial or name with him? I don't know if it's associated with him, but all I'm getting is James. Uh -huh. um, but also James the First. It would be interesting, like I say, to come here at night's time on your own, because I believe there is a more of a shadowy figure associated with here, a more of an, again, male, not, yeah. not feminine, but, but much more, um, I'm seeing him in like, almost in sackcloths, almost quite miserable. Now, I don't, I have a funny feeling, you know, it's not associated with, with, the, with the rooms, but it's just, I think it's a lot, I think it's actually associated with the ground that was here before. When was, you say sackcloth, you're talking a long yeah, time Yeah, no, ago. I know, I, this is what I'm trying yeah, to get yeah. to. I'm, I'm, I want to say Middle Ages, I want to say really, really, I've no idea how old this castle <laughs> is, but I mean, even if it wasn't here prior to that, I think that there is a real hunched over, poor, Sorrowful soul on his who, who's on his own that just rumbles around this 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 area. And would people see him? Is I think it... shadows. I think it's right. more going to be more shadows. It's just it's just a dark it's just a dark vibration that you pick up on. Now, one thing I've heard here from Claire Ordenley is a couple of kids. All right. Or children. I had a very interesting dream last night where I was shown a room very similar to this and I was being taken to a wall, the side of a wall, and I was being shown by the two children writing on the wall. Oh, gosh. I don't know what that means to me. Yeah. I mean, it was scratched. It was, it was like a pen. It wasn't a pencil or, or a biro, but it was scratched onto the wall. Um, and it was kept getting rubbed out. And it was almost, I don't know what, I, I can't link in to, to them here at this precise moment. Okay. But I do have to trust what I'm given. What given. And every time that happens, it tends to be sort of right. Now, I have noticed something I didn't say earlier on. I did notice that there's a lot of energy, and it sounds so corny, but there's a lot of energy moving around this castle. Mm -hmm. And the energy is associated with one or two men. So there's a lot of... You know, and oh, almost right. patrolling in a way, I suppose. And any of the men that you mentioned, any of the men that you you mentioned, you said a soldier at the beginning. The, yeah, yeah. I, whether that's the same time period, I don't know, because I'm only seeing it as an energy. I'm seeing it like a cloud. Right. Um, and I've been very much aware of it in my walk around with us this, with, with, with today and also when I arrived. Right. Um, and you walk in and out of it, and it's not stationary, so it's not like a ley line, or it's not like yeah. something's happened on this spot. But there's something separate that's moving around. Yeah, it's, male, it's an independent... It, male but it's a group of males. Oh, right. It's not one person, it's a group of males. Oh, right. So they are literally... They're not here, but it's more to do with downstairs in the grounds. Right. Moving around. Do you get, like, a time period? of when these people, these men, would have come from? No, I can't get away from the Civil War now. We've now heard two separate spiritual links to the 17th century battles that raged near here. But 
do such energies still have an adverse effect on modern day life in this part of Somerset? As we prepare for nightfall, would any further punishment be thrown down upon the most haunted team? Take the table up in the air. Take it up. Take it no, up. No. up. Take it up. Take it up. Take it up. Take it up. Taunton is a place that is said to have once forced Queen Victoria to draw the curtains in her train carriage as she passed through a town associated with a turbulent past. Heavy political overtones were once felt here, particularly when hanging Judge George Jeffreys passed the death sentence on many a man. And now it was our turn to see if this man's wrath still lingers three centuries on. Oh, no. No, 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 no. One other more secretive occurrence has surrounded this place for nearly a century since Lionel, the son of a tenant at the castle, died here in mysterious circumstances. So with both Ian settled in the castle's library, David, John Dibley and I could return to the museum to see if the loathsome George Jeffreys was prepared to talk. No, really? Will it help before they're taken into the court? Is it worth asking now? Or? Yeah, I think so. I heard that. I heard that. That was to present. Like a woman's yeah. Is it worth asking now? Or? Yeah, I think so. I heard that. I heard that. That was to present. Like a woman's yeah. I feel really apprehensive. Do you? Yeah. Oh, I heard that. What's that? Something moved back behind you. Oh, f shh. Oh, f shh. I feel really nervous here. Just in that spot. I, I yeah, just yeah, feel I do. Dragged through here. And... Something's horrible there. What? Just where you're standing? Yeah, I just. I feel, I'm, if you weren't standing there, I'd, I'd run out. Honestly, just here, just just round this area. I don't know what it is. If there's a spirit in this room, please come forward. That light's just gone out. The torch has just gone out. The torch has just started to take in the energy. It's... That was on a minute ago. Dead. You're getting the odd flash off it, but nothing major. Yeah. Fantastic. You just changed the battery in that before as well. Yeah, the battery's just been changed. If there's anybody here, were you held here? Were you sentenced to death here? Just round this corner here, the came round. You know, like a black shadow. Yeah. It just went like that round the side of the. Yeah, that's the sort of thing I've seen during the walk round. Now I feel as if something big is going to happen. Now whether it's anxiety, and I've just seen a gravestone. Is there any graves around here? Go on. Someone's been buried around here. Because allegedly there is an Anglo-Saxon graveyard, but it's you know where the uh, van's parked at the minute. Mm. That's it. It's parked right on it. Okay. Are you to do with the graveyard? Yes. Yes. Please move the table. Anything? Oh, oh, you're right. Oh, 
No, I was just filming you then, and then yeah. I just felt something just like, it just whispered down my ear, and that's what made me just start and jump. Oh. All right. Are you the man in the sackcloth? You are. Ah, oh, hello. You are. There's an energy behind me. It's also going down my right arm. Please stand behind the man with the light. So he can feel what I'm I sorry, feel. Sorry, I just felt as if something just played with my head then. Yeah? As if something just... Uh, it's hard to wait. I honestly just felt as if something just touched me there. Okay. On the top of my head. With both Ian's reporting an abundance of sounds from within the library, we decide to hold a second vigil in this same building with David, Kieran, Kath, both Johns and myself. But before we begin, Carl, Stuart and Richard were preparing to table tip way up in the attic. I don't know if you're here. Please try to show yourself to us. For the first time I've actually got cold, I'm feeling cool. Mm -hmm. it's, cold. it's definitely yeah. colder up here, isn't it? It's warm out there. So I'm just moving. Are we doing it's one of us. Is that one of us? It certainly isn't me. I'm not moving. Try to move this table. You've got energy, you're, you're with us. Um, I don't know who you are, but we need to... No way, no, no way! No, 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 never, ever, never! Has that ever happened? My head's on the top, my head's on the top, my head's on the top. Stay with us, let's stick right back on the table. Please, spirit, spirit, whoever you are, God, thank you so much, you're bloody marvellous. We've never, in all the time that we've been doing this, there's a spirit with us, there's a very strong spirit with us in this room now. I ask you again to do what you've just done. Levitate this table off the floor with all no four way. legs off the floor. I don't believe it. Thank you. No, my, Richard, please. My legs, are, my legs are back here. Yeah. <laughs> please use our energy. We're with you. Take the table up in the air. All four legs, please. We're working with you. All four legs, and I want it to go. I want it to come higher. I want it to come above our knees. We want to be able to stand up. Is that going Please, come on. Please, oh, keep no. going. Come on. Come on, Spirit, whoever you are. Uh, there's only two of us. There's me and Carl now doing this. Please, please, Spirit, lift the table. Lift the table. That's it. Stuart's put his, 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 his hands back on it. My head is thumping like you wouldn't believe it. I want to see this table lift. I then want to talk to you. Please take it off with all four legs. Levitate this table off the floor. Take it up. Take it no way, up. No. Take it up. Oh, no. right, done it. Do you realise we've done it? Yeah. Do you no realise we've believe, done it? I don't believe we've done it. Lionel, can you hear me? Can you hear us? Can you make a loud noise for us, please? I think Lionel's upstairs, though, isn't he? I think that table's going. We've got a bold area growing. Where? Ooh. In the corner. Ooh. You see, I've been feeling back. cold all this time here, oh, like really freezing. That's why I've got my coat on. Where? Where, Kieran? Right In the corner, direct. Where, where my, the green? Where my hair is pointing. Oh, in that corner of the room. Yeah. See how Dave's walking now. There you go, where David's standing now. Oh, well, is he doing anything new? I feel a bit giddy, but I think it's just because I stood up. A bit sharpish. Come on, Lionel, if you can produce your shape, your, even your height on me, even if it put a shadow of your head here or something. Oh. Down there? Don't know. Is See it, there? Yeah, it can. It's like it's come through into your top of your, bottom of your navel. Yeah, that's where he's here. A bit lower than that. Well, he was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's gone just. No. 
I just need to sit back for a minute and but you know, I, 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 I've got tears in my what eyes again. The hell um, has gone on here? I don't believe it. I want to run around the room. Right, Kim, just, 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 Kyle, just so you know, Rick, my leg. No, no! Listen, uh, listen, you, you know I'm doing that. No, you. See now. I'm I'll do it. Let's try and emulate it now. Yeah. On right. camera, right? Oh, Stu, yeah. get your knees under the table. Yeah. I'm going to get my knees under the table. Yeah. After three. One, two, three. I'm lifting it now with both knees. Yeah. And, well, and there's, a, there's a difference. There's a total difference. Oh. The, there, was a, there was a sense. Yeah, that's quite oh, impressive. Hang on. Look what's happened. What? I'm on tiptoes. That's right. That's so right. right. Yeah, you've got to. You've got to. That, you can't yeah, possibly. That, we'll pick that you up. can't possibly have your feet flat on the floor. No, you can't. See it, can't you? Let it come up through me, Lionel. <laughs> Fuck, what? I've never seen it like that before. No. That is very strange. Bizarre. Here's, it, it's starting to push down again. Come away then now, David. Oh. That, that, that was weird, that. It was worth us staying there, wasn't it, yeah, for that? That, that? that whole thing is, is great. We were already aware that this location holds plenty of spirits, but these two separate bouts of apparent phenomena have only added to its reputation. And one floor below in the room where he'd prematurely died had Lionel's aura manifested in the huge ball of cold air that Kieran's thermal image camera had clearly captured. And not since these same three investigators instigated a similar reaction at Bottle Within Castle in 2004 have we seen such a massive movement of a table. Got speed. Please go. And we say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Surrounded by the implements of war, as well as memories of death and execution, our final few hours in Somerset promise more frights in store. Built in 1138, Taunton Castle has witnessed many events, all of which appear to give credence to its latter-day claims of paranormal activity. By far the most active area so far tonight appears to be the main castle house, the very same building that David, Carl, Kath Stewart, John Gilbert and I were about to tentatively step back into. If you need our help, can you cry? Can you make a moan? Is anyone else really hot in here? I, see, I, was, I was just about to comment, you are sweating like crazy in here. And it's not that hot. I feel like the room's gone really small, but really claustrophobic. You all right, John? Yeah. Yeah, you don't look too good, I think that's it. Lionel, if that was you, please can you make another moan or a whine? <gasps> yes. <gasps> yes. I'm going to keep getting strange smells. Old alcohol smell. That's interesting, isn't yeah. it? Did you like to drink? Did you like a drink, Lionel? Oh, My it's not God. coming outside, is it? Would you like a drink, Lionel? Oh, Lionel, do something else. My right arm's going numb. Is it? Well, it's locked in that cupboard. It's going for a couple of minutes. No. Do you want to go up to the attic? I just feel like they're going to keel over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. What's that? It's like a fairground ride, what? isn't it? It's yeah, like... it is. It's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Everything's really. You constantly feel like you're in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are there any spirit people here with us now? In this attic? What was that? What was that? In this attic? 
What was that? What was that? It's a level here. Yeah. Do you feel a bit better now? I still feel sick. Yeah, I feel sick. Oh, Take someone on the camera. John. Camera. Oh, Which one? I can't see. Don't John. Go. John. Oh. John. 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 Johnny. Johnny. Cal. Come on. John. Come on, Cal. Cal. Come on. Up. Oh. John. Up you come. John, you're right. You're right. John, talk to me. You know what's going on? It's all right. Cal. Let's get out. You're right, Cal. Oh. John, you're right. You're right. Do you want some water? Do you want me to go get you some water, guys? I think you may be better off getting them out. John, sit down. John, wait. Sit. Come on. 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 Get John now. I think we need to get John out. I need to see my hair as well. I, I don't. I don't feel like Carl does. I can tell. I, mean, I, I just keep going. Can we go down. Do you want to get out? Yeah. Yeah. Let's get down. With Carl literally out for the count and John clearly regretting his decision to persevere, despite his now obvious physical discomfort, we decide to call it quits for the night, quite simply before anyone else fell foul of this area's insufferable aura. Although there was still one other piece of phenomena to be heard that we captured as we were leaving the building. What's that chair at the top? Did you put that there? No. It's just Me there? and Carl into it before. Did you put that there? No. It's just Me there. With the exception of our mediums, we'd arrived in Somerset well aware of the main story surrounding this town and its castle. The bloody Assizes may well have left their stamp on this location's history, but had a far more recent death, one that still remains shrouded in mystery, triggered these remarkable series of events. So is Taunton's castle haunted? The investigation of Taunton Castle revealed a number of different phenomena. Carl and John in the attic had very unusual physiological reaction to the area. Is anyone else really hot in here? I, I, I was just about to comment, you are sweating like crazy in here. And it's not that hot. I feel like the room's gone really small, but really claustrophobic. They reported feeling very tired and unwell and then fainted simultaneously. Oh, oh. Right. Oh, There's a perfectly natural explanation for their feeling of tiredness and certainly illness. Given that it's a very tight staircase that leads up to the attic, that the floors are very disorientating, and that the temperature was relatively higher on that particular investigation, I'm not surprised that they felt unwell or tired. It could be a perfectly natural reaction to the effort that they put into to actually get into that room. In the attic also, Carl, Stuart and Richard actually conducted a table tipping exercise. Now, true to form, this particular team actually ensured that there are a number of controls in place. There were cameras pointed below the table and also locked off on the upper torsos. At some point, you can actually see the four legs of the table rise. Levitate this table off the floor with all no four way. legs off the floor. On first viewing, this is very impressive evidence. However, we still have to be a little bit tentative about interpreting it as paranormal. 
The lock-off on the upper torso is some distance back, and given the low-level lighting and that it's in night vision, it is very difficult to ensure with absolute 100% certainty that we're dealing with phenomena and not with some sort of unconscious or subconscious movement of their arms or other part of their bodies. No way, no way. No way. No way. All in all, Taunton Castle revealed some fascinating phenomena that was allegedly paranormal. I'm still sceptical about a lot of it, but I think it's a fantastic location for the excitement and for the genuine reactions that the crew had for their time there. So is this a site still stained by the consequences of a bloody battle? Or is it merely a grounded base for the pain and suffering endured by one gentle soul? Sleep tight.